Alright, hello everybody. Today I'm going to be going over all the legendaries in 7.1.5 so far and ranking them, telling you why they're good, why they're bad, and why they're kind of average. So, if we start off with the new helm that was introduced, this helm is actually quite good. Um, you know, it's got high haste and it's got crit, so it's got good stats on it. Um, for, for one thing, at 940 animal level, that, that is fairly important. Um, and the use, so you get 75% uh, uh, mana cost reduction on your spells for every second after you use, after you use Lance Wrath. So if you use a Lance Wrath at 20 stacks, you're going to get 25 seconds of 75% mana cost reduction on your offensive spells. Now, when you're you going to be using Lance Wrath, at that point is where you're actually going to be using probably the most smites, the most penances, um, and things like Halo. So, the actual mana saving from this legendary can be quite high if you are, you know, having to put out a lot of healing after a Light's Wrath. So, if there's continual damage after a Light's Wrath, you will notice, um, you know, yourself saving a lot of mana. Now, if we look at the, you know, cost of penance, it's about 30k. Um, Smite is about 40k. You know, y there is potentially a lot of mana you can save by using um, this headpiece here. You're also going to be obviously saving mana using Purge of the Wicked. So, you know, you're looking to save, depending on how many smites you cost, you are looking to save quite a lot of mana using this helm. This helm can let you, you know, drop a mana trinket, um, per se, to use a throughput trinket, something like that. You know, it just opens up options for you, and it is, it is a very good helm to have. Um, so, Pridas as well is, is quite a good um, neck for the Disc Priest. Uh, just lots of stats on it, um, a socket as well. And then the actual equip effect is extremely powerful. Um, you know, if everybody had a Pridez in your raid, you would pretty much be able to drop a healer just because they do do that much throughput. Um, so three, uh, so Pridez, you know, it's got great stats on it compared to equivalent item level items. Um, and just the, the equip, even though it's not helping your throughput to other people, it is a big survivability boost for yourself. Um, and you know, more more healing you're doing to yourself is less healing you have to do to yourself. Um, so yeah, Pridaz is a very good. All right, so the chest beast Estelle. So this one can be good, can be average, can be you know pretty not usable. So now this gives you haste, two percent haste for every time you cast plea per atonement. So if you have five atonements, you get ten percent haste for five seconds. Now, while this is good, this is only good if you're casting plea. So if you find yourself on a fight like Croesus, especially if you have things like double innovates, you'll find yourself not actually pleading very much because you know you're always going to be at you know between over over six atonements, over ten atonements a lot of the time in that fight, and you're just not going to be using plea. And if you are going to be using plea, you know at twenty stacks, plea costs almost eighty thousand mana. And you know, 40% haste at 80,000 mana. You know, you gotta weigh up what that haste is gonna be doing at that point. Um, you know, smite isn't affected by haste except for the cast time, so it's not. You don't actually gain that much from haste once you've actually put out all your atonements. Um, well, that's that's a lie. You do because you can get out more smites, but it just depends on how much damage is obviously going out. So, Estelle's is that's that's why it's not. I wouldn't call it top tier. It's, you know, there is situations where you just don't use plea. Now, there was something I was talking last night about um, on the Discord about how you can actually use, um, you know, you can use plea in your innovate window to gain a large amount of haste. So if you're, if you're building up, say, you know, to 20 stacks and you have to move, you know, what I find I do is I often just use Penance. If I, you know, if I've got Innovate up and need a move for something, I'll use Penance as my movement spell. Now, rather than doing that, I can swap to Plea, because, you know, and then be getting the haste from that. I think that'll actually be a very good option, and that is actually, you know, will be a good use for Estelle's. Obviously, it just requires you to be, you know, you're going to be losing one or two atonements during that period, depending on when you use it. Um, and then, obviously, you do have to be thinking about, you know, you have to play at some point. Um, so the chest does have its uses. It's not the worst. It's not the best. Um, it's just, you know, crit mastery. It doesn't have haste, so it's not the greatest. Um, it is on the chest piece, so you are going to be replacing a piece of tier for it, um, depending on 
what you have in the tiered chest actually has all right stats on it so it's just kind of one of those things where it's like there are better alternatives to use um, so now for the wrists um, the problem with these wrists is that pain up while it's a good cooldown you're not a tank healer you're not really worried about the tank healing it's just there is just better options um, the reduction on pain suppression is rather large especially if you're using power shield on cooldown along with rapture um, but you know it's got good stats but again it's just there is a lot better options something like the helm something like pride as even the chest will give you much more throughput um, you know generally you won't having to be used you won't have to use paints up that frequently in a fight you know other classes do have external cooldowns too generally going to be running with holy paladins who have sack generally going to be running with druids who have iron bark you know if you if you do need um, you know more pain subs if you like you know if you do need more reactive pain subs during the fight then you probably have a healing problem rather than this legendary being an aid to that so you know the legendary does have its uses certainly in some situations just all round it's not very good um, you know just for general healing kind of purposes so now the hands now these hands are actually really good um, so essentially it just lets you have a constant uh, time in on yourself um, you know, it's it is a significant amount of healing to yourself when you have atonement constantly on yourself. Um, you know, you know you are one target in the raid. You're essentially one target in the raid that is constantly going to be um, healed for free. So, you know, depending on what happens in the fight, obviously valuing the um, usefulness of this legendary kind of depends on what happens in the fight. But it is a very useful legendary. Um, it is part of the top four. Uh, so next we'll have the the belt. So now the belt, well, it's good in Mythic Plus. It doesn't really see much use in raids. And again, that is because we don't use smite that much. So, you know, typically using about 20 smites in a fight. Um, and the problem with the, the belt itself is that because... Um, so you have a 30% to reset the cast on smite and if you're chain casting you know if you're going to be casting two smites back to back um, you can't actually react to your penance resetting unless you're physically there pressing smite spamming penance seeing if it comes up and then going back to pressing smite um, there is a little bit of input delay in the game so what you can do is queue up spells so if you smite and then press smite again you know you'll be able to smite perfectly on your global cooldown so what you find is that you know, you might reset it on your first smite, but then you can't actually hit it till a global afterwards. Um, and so you generally find as well with a 30% chance to reset is that, you know, it's penance is already on about a three second cooldown before it might reset. And then, you know, it's, you might have to cast more atonements or something else. Penance might not be the right option. It's just because it's not a set in stone thing. It's a proc, you know, it might not proc at the right time. You're not casting smites that frequently. Um, etc etc so it just doesn't have that many uses um, it, it does mainly come down to the fact that you're just not using smite that much um, but you know and again crit mastery for some reason blizzard thought disc priests need crit mastery on you know three pieces no oh, four pieces of gear even though crit mastery crit isn't that ideal for the disc priest um, so yeah the belt is okay um, it is better than I would say it's about the fifth best legendary, um, but it's again it's pretty average. So the Norganans. Now the problem with Norganans, while it's really good, it's only good for one situation on the Disc Priest, and that is when you have um, when you're spamming out powered radiance. So as Disc, you have Plea, you have powered shield, you have pants you can cast on the move, you can recast Purge of the Wicked to reapply your dot. Um, and then the only really thing you need to be standing still to cast is Halo, Smite, and Powered Radiance. Um, and Powered Radiance, you generally, you know, want to be casting that preemptively. Um, it's not a reactive spell, so you're not that concerned about, you know, you are concerned about getting as many off as possible. It's just, you're doing, you're always going to be casting Powered Radiance preemptively to a mechanic that comes up. And it's not going to be the end of the world if you have to cancel that cast and recast it because you have to move from some mechanic. Whereas, you know, if you are casting a heal to save somebody, um, that might be more important. So, 
just no Ganons from a district priest just because we have so much movement already and our spells our high impact spells um, that we need to stand and cut and stand still and cast we're going to be casting preemptively so no Ganons really is quite useless for the for the dis priest um, you know, it's you can find its uses. Sure, you know, you get an innovate. You want to be making sure you cast radiance. You know, every every global. You know, you don't want to stop. Nogannons is great there, but again, that is a very niche situation, um, and it just doesn't outperform the other legendaries. Now, Safaz, oh Safaz, um, again, high crit, not the greatest, not bad, but still not the greatest. Um, you know, works under spells. The only really fight where Safazes will be good is. Um, Botanist, I believe, because of the you can constantly dispel the um, the debuff that comes up there. You know, it's fairly frequent. But again, bad stats. You know, has it has a lot of secondary stats on it. Has a socket. That's again just with you know necks and rings at the moment. They just have a lot of secondaries on them. So if you want to wear Safaz as just primarily a stat stick, it's not really a bad option. But yeah. It's again, it's just, it's a very niche kind of item. You can find uses for it, but that's about it. All right, so now for the absolute worst legendary, um, Nero. So Nero is a really, 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 really terrible, terrible legendary. So Nero, by the sounds of it, sounds all right. You know, your penance will heal everybody in your power word barrier. But whoever wrote this tooltip obviously didn't coordinate with the people who were writing how the actual spell works, and it doesn't work like that at all. So, you know, we would assume that, you know, my penance will do 640k damage, so it would heal 640k people to in my barrier, plus then do the atonement healing. No, that's not how it works. All penance will do will heal people who don't have atonement by your penance atonement healing. So it does not double dip with anybody who has atonement, now, while this might sound, you know, you're, you can drop down a barrier and do a large amount of healing just with a penance, that's generally in good playstyle not what you're going to be doing. In good playstyle, you're going to be dropping your barrier, you're going to be making sure you have atonements before you drop down that barrier because you have this fantastic you know, artifact trait um, where you get double atonement healing inside your barrier. So when you drop down your barrier, you know, you can put out a penance, it's going to do double healing from this, so it's going to do more than it's going to be doing with Nero, you can drop down, you know, Light's Wrath, a Halo, whatever, and it's going to be doing a significant amount of healing, which Nero doesn't go with. So it's kind of just a, like, um, an oh shit button for your power barrier if you've, you know, stuffed up your playing atonements, which... You never really want, ideally, you don't want to be playing, you know, from behind. You know, if you're using this trinket, you know, if you're using this ring, then you're kind of just planning, well, I can chuck down my barrier whenever and it's going to get some use. Well, that's not, you know, ideal at all. You know, it's not efficient. Um, and you're not going to be getting anywhere near as usefulness out of that power, ba uh, that barrier that you would otherwise if you had a Tomans out. So Nero, completely useless. It's got shit stats. Um, yeah, what are you doing, Blizzard? Fix it, please. You know, make it useful. Make it maybe reduce the cooldown of barrier. I don't know. Um, but yeah, Nero is very bad. And now for the very, very, very broken future site. So while this trinket would probably be equipped by a lot of disc priests if it was just a stat stick. Now you got to remember as well, this is going to be 940, so it's even higher in intellect, higher in secondary stats when it gets to 940. Um, the on-use effect for it is incredibly powerful. So, you know, as I said, just by itself, without the on-use effect, it'll be worn. Um, with the on-use effect, it makes it completely broken. This is the one legendary that, you know, every disc priest wants. It is, you know, it is ridiculous. So, the on-use effect increases all your healing done by 15%. And then causes 50% of the overhealing uh, you do to be redirected to three nearby allies. Now, why is this so good for the Disc Priest? Well, the Disc Priest has a crazy cooldown called Light's Wrath that is on a 1.5 minute cooldown, which lines up very nicely with the 1 minute and 15 second cooldown of Velens. So you can line up your Velens every single time with Light's Wrath, 
um, you can it read it increases the healing you do from that light's wrath by 15% so it increases you know at the point you know big raid damage comes out you get an orb you get a slam on Croesus you lights wrath you're gonna almost top your raid right and then anyone you do top because you know they might have Safaz, they might have an immunity they might have something else going down 50% of that overhealing you're going to be doing is redirected to other players. This trinket usually comes out to be about 5-6% to 6 of someone's healing, and that's just the redistribution of the healing. You know, take in, in mind that you're also going to be increasing your burst healing at specific points in the fight where you are going to be burst healing by 15%. And if you've seen a Dispriest healing recap, you know, they're, they're spike healers. So, you know, every, every minute or so, or every 45 seconds or so, they're basically going to be doing huge spikes of healing. And you can line that up with Velen's perfectly. Um, so Velen's is an incredibly powerful legendary. Um, use this over any trinket you ever get because Velen's is very, very strong. All right, so just a recap. Um, the helm is very good. The neck is very good. Um, Velen's is very good. And the gloves are very good. Uh, so all the, those four legendaries are the best legendaries to equip in almost every situation. Um, and the other six are really quite average. You know, you struggle to find uses for the other six. They're mostly just stat sticks. Uh, which is really sad because I have those six. So, you know, take pride in your legendaries, right? Alright, well, thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something.